All right, so here we are back with uh, part two. If you didn't catch part one, part one is ascending the spire up to Achilles. Um This is a full run, basically unedited, except for, you know, I cut out like a minute where I had to take a bathroom break after killing Achilles, uh, which divides part one and part two of the video. But if you haven't seen part one, that's from the very beginning of the... Uh, of the dungeon which covers all the weapons covers the loadout and uh, covers uh, in-depth commentary for the entire run up uh, up to completing Atlas so I will leave a link in the description I'll probably pin it in the comments um, okay. I'll make sure that you have some way to uh, to get to part one pretty easily but if for whatever reason you don't see it anywhere uh, just go go to my channel, subscribe, and uh, turn on notifications and you, you won't miss any videos. Uh, but you should be able to find my video very easily if you just go to my channel. Um, it was uploaded right before this one, so it's there and it covers everything that I'm using. But, um, so back back to part two, we've just, we've just killed Aklas. And now I am descending the spire to get to Perseus. We've ascended the spire, connected the nodes, killed Aklas. Now we're going to go down the spire through these nightmare uh, looking vents, <coughs> um, kill a bunch of goblins, activate some more red circuit nodes, and then we'll get to Perseus. So for this section here, I took off my Achilles, uh weapon loadout. I haven't changed my my subclass. I'm on Void Night Stalker, even though I said that you can just go to part one and you'll learn everything that you need to. I'll just briefly go over what I'm using here. I'm using a Void Night Stalker Falcon's Hauberk build with a Repulsor Brace on my Unforgiven SMG, which I'm not using right here, but I use for basically 95% of the whole dungeon. Um, with Elemental Charge, Elemental Ordnance, High Energy Fire, Font of Might. Aspects are Stylish Executioner, Vanishing Step, Mobius Quiver for a damage slash debuff uh, super. And then I'm using the fragment that gives you super energy when you when you kill enemies while surrounded, uh, which is really good. You're, you're always going to have your super for every damage phase if you have that fragment. Um, along with Echo of Leeching, so you know if I run out of SMG ammo before killing something, I can just I can just melee it, and then um, and then I've instantly got uh, my health back. Uh, as well as Vortex Grenades with Echo of Undermining. And uh, Finishers give me Invisibility. So for this section here, I, like I said, I switched off of my Achilles weapon loadout. And I put on Trinity Ghoul because the as you're descending the spire here um, and standing on the beams basically all the adds and the goblins and everything they're all just sitting ducks they can't shoot you from where you are up high so if you just get lightning rod going with trinity ghoul um, you can just kill them all really fast without worrying about them at all um, otherwise use whatever you want to take them out but I just preferred something that was quick easy and took care of a whole bunch at once um, you know, otherwise it, I'd have to go down there, shoot him with my SMG up close, and it would just take a lot longer and be a lot riskier. And do you really want to die at, uh, you know, one of these intermission, quote unquote, um, encounters or phases between the boss phases or encounters? No, these are like these are the sections that you don't want to die at because you've already done all the hard work of killing Achilles. Um so you want to get to Percy's obviously and take your gamble there if you die at Percy's oh well 
but you don't want to die like you know by getting hit by a fan blade in a vent or an electric circuit in the uh, in the shaft in the middle there, which can easily kill you too. Uh, but yeah, so once you take care of take care of all those uh, all those goblins and everything, and activate the red circuits to go finish your uh, fan blade section, you get to this section here, and this is the last mini section before getting to Percy's. Um, so I switched my loadout right before hopping down here, and uh, let me, I'll go over that in a second. But uh, yeah, so I switched my weapons back to Unforgiven. Um, also, I I switched my uh, took off tie pan and I put my sword back on, which is what, what I use at the beginning of the dungeon. Um, and you know, while ascending the spire and connecting the nodes, you know, the sword is just kind of a good backup for if you make a bad jump or if you get knocked off map, um, whatever. You can always pull out your sword and hopefully swipe yourself back onto map and not die that way. So I decided to go through the fan blades and everything with my sword. You don't need a heavy for anything else really, but it does one heavy swipe the uh, Arctrician Minotaurs. So it's not bad for that, but it's primarily just for the utility. Um, but I switched to uh, Wish Ender and back to Unforgiven because in that previous section there, the, there's that Hydra in the middle. Wish Ender easily takes care of all the Hydras because it has intrinsic anti-barrier, armor piercing, arrows. You can just hit all your crits regardless of where the Hydra's shields are. Um, and then, yeah. Not only that, but I keep Wish Ender on for my, for my Percy's fight, um, which I've just found works well for me. Arbalist is also a really good choice. Um, you know, Wither Horde's decent too, because you can you can do AoE damage, uh, damage over time to the Hydras in the Percy's fight uh, with Wither Horde. And not only that, but you can use Wither Horde this season uh, for weakened clear. So regardless if you're on solar, arc, stasis, you can still have that void 15% debuff for extra damage from your grenade launchers. But I'm using a void subclass, so I don't need weakened clear, at least not for the void debuff. Um, not only that, but you know, one reason I go with Wish Ender as opposed to Arbalist is that um, this way I'm running double primary ammo, uh, which means I'll get more heavy bricks. Um, but to be honest, I had more heavy bricks than I know than I knew what to do with because I have uh, my rocket launcher has field prep, enhanced field prep on it, um, which I've heard that even though it doesn't say so in the description, uh, field prep gives you basically intrinsic uh, scavenger. Maybe even ammo finder, I don't know. But you basically, you get more ammo. You find more ammo and get more ammo per brick uh, just by having field prep. So you could, and uh, I, I'm saying this after doing this dungeon solo and then solo flawless, <clears throat> using the same weapon with field prep, uh, you don't, you definitely don't need to run uh, a scavenger mod you probably don't even need to run an ammo finder mod. But I kept my ammo finder mod on anyway because uh, I didn't really have anything more important to use there anyway. And you know I didn't want to risk going without both ammo finder and scav. But I can't remember if I actually kept, if I actually had the scavenger on or not here. Um, I probably just kept it on because you don't, these boss fights are so long um, 
you know, if you're an average player and you don't have the game down to a science and you're not like pro skill level at the game, then you're you're gonna be doing like between five and seven phases. You know, that's if they go fairly smoothly on these bosses, which is gonna seem disheartening when you see how little their health bar goes down after you do all the work of connecting the nodes, all the work of surviving all the um, supp supplicants, which are the harpies that fly at you and explode. Um, after surviving Percy's running around the map and doing his dive at you and kicking you and um, so it's a feat in itself just surviving everything in this dungeon room and connecting all the nodes getting to the damage uh, phase itself um, and then to see so little damage done can feel pretty disheartening uh, but it's just it's just the way it is so you gotta deal with it I have you know as I've already as I've talked about a lot in part one against Aklas I've done the most I could to optimize my build to do as much damage as possible without compromising you know add clear um, and everything else that's in the dungeon because I'm not interested in hot swapping uh, and changing my changing my weapons uh, and gear like, I'm not I'm not interested in changing my pants in the middle of a gunfight um, and I think it's kind of cheesy so you know like I said I get it I get why people do it you can but I think I wish they would make it so that like dungeon encounters and raid encounters had locked loadouts at least for the encounters it's what I like about doing uh, like master nightfalls and grandmasters and all that you once like you gotta plan your build and you gotta stick to it so you have to have something that's versatile uh, that'll have you covered in every situation possible that requires yeah, so see, I just did all that work, and I didn't, I didn't get my damage phase. Um, but yeah, I feel like locked loadouts in some of these dungeons raids, keep them where they are in nightfalls, um, weekly campaign missions. I like that. I like that uh, you're forced to make a build and stick to it. It's, you know, if changing, like I said, changing your pants in the middle of a gunfight just seems kind of cheesy to me doesn't it like uh, I get there's a skill level to it to a degree not that it's a fair one because obviously if you're on mouse and keyboard you can swipe through your menu uh, super fast if you ever used a controller to go through the destiny menus you'll know that it's like moving molasses like to get your cursor from your legs to your primary weapon it's gonna take like two seconds whereas you can do it instantaneously with a mouse so hot swapping is not even a feasible strategy like cross platform. Um, never mind the fact that I subjectively think that it's you know a cheesy mechanic in the game and don't like I don't really like watching people do it. It's just not interesting. Like I'd rather watch somebody put some thought into their build that a build that's going to cover them in every aspect of the of the game of the encounter or of the mission. Anyways, I've already uh, I've already gone off about that on part one, so I'm not going to in this part. But basically, I'm doing the best I can with my build here as an average player on controller to uh, to maximize my effectiveness in both ad clear survivability and boss damage. So. Basically, what I'm saying is, I'm not when I get to the damage when I get to damage phase against Percy's. I'm not going to change my pants so that I have three stacks of uh, Font of Might, for, you know, for 25 seconds of Font of Might and Elemental Time Dilation and all that. I'm just using the same stuff the whole the whole dungeon basically. I only switch my weapons for each encounter. Um, and so if like I said if you wanna if you want to know all about what I'm using you can check part one but I'll go over it again briefly here against Percy's I'm using Phantom Might, High Energy Fire 
and I'm getting those via ele void elemental wells from elemental ordnance. This is not the typical Jerfalcon's build that I use like for doing solo flawless master nightfalls and that kind of stuff. I usually run devour uh, with taking charge and I get high energy fire from orbs and I get quantum might from elemental armaments because that way my void weapon produces orbs of power and void wells. Basically about the same time, I pick them both up, I have a double, you know, I'm double stacked on damage buffs, high energy fire, font of might. Um, but that's not practical for this dungeon when you need guaranteed damage buffs. Uh, you don't, I mean, you don't need it, but if you, if you want to, uh, if you don't want to do this fight for an hour and take like 10 phases to kill Percy's, then you definitely want to try and min-max your damage as much as possible. So I need to get Fontamite and High Energy Fire in a kind of a guaranteed way. So how do I do that? Well, when you're ad clearing, I actually screwed up here, speak of which. Um, when you're clearing out this uh, this room here, where you do damage from, uh, save yourself a couple goblins. Don't add clear the whole room. It's okay to kill all the supp all the, the uh, supplicants. the The minotaurs don't matter. The attrition minotaurs because they despawn uh, for damage phase anyway. Uh, but if you save yourself some goblins in here, when you come back to do damage you can use the goblins to get your your void well so like i said i'm using elemental ordnance so my grenade is going to give me a guaranteed void well whereas you know elemental armaments is chance for a void well based on multi kills so you you could use elemental armaments but you got to realize you're probably not going to get your void well unless you've got like three four goblins saved so Elemental Orange is just, a, is just an easy, guaranteed way. And I don't need my grenade for anything else, really, because even though I have Echo of Undermining and it could debuff the boss and do a little bit of damage uh, to the boss, that doesn't matter because I'm using, I'm using my Void Super, Mobius Quiver, which is going to weaken, suppress, make volatile uh, Percy's anyway. So... Um, so I don't need my grenade for the debuff on the boss. I also have my smoke bomb as backup. So actually when my um, On an optimal damage phase with uh, with my rocket launcher I will I will go back to this room with all the circuits complete and then so take note here obviously if you've done this you know, but uh, you have to shoot the red circuit nodes uh, in good time so as soon as you start shooting and obviously you have to make sure your attrition buff is up so here's another thing that I would actually I'll go back and recommend that you do uh, before sounding the alarm off and uh, you know starting the damage phase right so like back in this room this is where you finish the last two nodes as soon as you finish the last one the alarm goes off. Percy's has to be in the room, which you probably know, but he has to be in here. And then you've got to get out. Um, get out of the room, go back to the other room. And then you a couple seconds later, the red the red circuit nodes will open up and you have to shoot all five uh, in a short when time in a short amount of time like I don't know how many seconds it is it doesn't I don't think it tells you um, but you know I want to say like four or five seconds something like that like if you have to reload your weapon in between shooting nodes you're probably gonna lose you're probably gonna reset the nodes if you reset the nodes you have to redo the whole, everything leading up to the damage phase uh, so it's a complete nightmare if you screw that part up so basically what I'm saying is before you complete the last node in Percy's room before sounding off the alarm to come back into this room 
make sure your Arctrician buff is fairly decent. So I would say make sure you got like 25 seconds on Arctrician. So what you could do is you can complete all the nodes up to the very last one. Wait on that last one. Double check all your stuff. Make sure you're good on heavy bricks. Make sure your abilities are where you want them. Uh, your super. Um, then go go back in here. Kill one of the minotaurs. Refresh your Arctrician buff. And then go back into the other room. Complete the circuit. Come back here. Shoot all five nodes. In an ideal damage phase you've got one or two two goblins left standing like I just had right there hit them with your grenade so make sure you have your grenade ready too the door is going to open shoot your first Mobius quiver then rocket vanishing step to instantly reload your rocket shoot another one uh, reload Mobius quiver again smoke bomb two more rockets so I think basically you get five rockets both your Mobius Quiver shots and Percy's is ideally debuffed the entire time and you've got Vault Arounds the entire time because um, you know proc and Vault Arounds right at the beginning doesn't matter because your Mobius Quiver is going to make Percy's volatile anyway so it's basically only once um, your Mobius Quiver effect is worn off that's when the Vault Arounds um, are, are most useful. Um, although I did forget to mention there, pick up your void well. Don't forget about that. So, on so right away you shoot your first Mobius quiver shot. Then, then you land on your void well, so that you have your void well for your first rocket shot. And that void well is giving you high energy fire. It's giving you, so it's giving you high energy fire for the entire damage phase, right? Because you only lose higher energy fire uh, after you kill something, and you're not killing Percy's on you know until the very end. So you're gonna have your 20% from higher energy fire the entire damage phase. You're gonna have Phantom Might for nine or ten seconds, which is pretty good. You know that's like half the damage phase. You're gonna have uh, Percy's gonna be debuffed the entire time from Mobius Quiver. And then from your smoke bomb, he's going to be volatile the entire time from your Mobius Quiver and from your Vault Arounds from your Falcon's Hauberk. So you're stacking quite a lot of damage buffs and debuffs here. Um, and even with all that, I, I think I still did this in six phases or so with one I think I failed the first phase because I had to reload my SMG and I didn't complete the circuit in time um, but say each phase you're actually doing decent decently optimal damage um, you know it's probably about a six phase and I've seen people do this solo in like two phases I think two or three phases Maybe not two. I think it's three. Um, hats off to them. You know, I don't. I don't know how they could do it. I know that like Arc Warlock or um, Solar Warlocks have. I, I want to say that it's a bug that they get like a ninety-five percent damage buff in their Well of Radiance against Percy's. It's against Percy's only. It's not anywhere else in the game. It's not anywhere else in this dungeon. It's just in against Percy's well of radiance gives you a 95% damage buff to your own well so your allies standing in your well they just get the standard 25% which is what it should be <clears throat> uh, but it's like bugged where the uh, the warlock that cast the well gets 95% so yeah like so if you want to do this optimally before they fix this in as quick as possible then you just do this on Solar Warlock, but I didn't want to do that um, with that said, because I, I don't really re like relying on kind of exploits and glitches and um, stuff that's not going to be around for the long haul, or is not intended. So I imagine that that is going to get fixed, um, you know, maybe it'll be next season before that happens. Uh, but then all those people that are crutching on 
uh, on that 95% buff to solo three phase or two phase Percy's, they're going to have to adapt to a different way. Not to say that they're not going to have a problem adapting, but I'd just rather not. Um, and I and, and I wanted to use uh, I wanted to use your Falcon's Hobrick with Night Stalker because this is probably the most uh, the class that I've had the most fun with. The build this is my favorite build of the season, basically. So ever since this dungeon came out, ever since um, the season launched with the uh, third rework of your Falcon's Hobrick, giving them volatile rounds after coming out of Invis. As this is basically how I wanted to play the dungeon. Also because I didn't want to rely on weak and clear. Um, so I like the seasonal artifacts and I'll, I'll use them modestly but I don't like uh, making a whole build based off of the seasonal artifacts and crutching on that for the entire season. I like doing. I like coming up with builds that have some longevity to them, which are applicable in different activities, different seasons, different metas. Um, you know, the seasonal artifacts are only around for for so long. Not only that, but they're expensive. Like five energy for weak and clear, five energy for solar operative. I am using solar operative, um, which is a fifteen percent all-around damage buff to everything while solo so abilities weapons just everything so I'm using that um, and I will say if I hadn't used it then I probably would have had to do one more damage phase on Aklas and Percy's and so it's it's not a big deal um, I don't think but uh, it definitely it definitely does help and then if you're doing this in a team, like you could use like monochroma monochromatic maestro or whatever it is, which um, which is cost six energy, something like that. But uh, but I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't really care about using anything else on my class item anyway. Like if I was on Titan, if I was on Heart of Inmost Light. Um, or if I was on Warlock, spamming grenades, I wouldn't have used Solo Operative probably. I probably would have used Double Bomber on my class item because that's, uh, to me, it's more valuable uh, having more grenades, more easy grenades than it is to have a 15% damage buff all around. Not only that, but it's just the consistency of playing that class, right? So like. If you're used to playing a build a certain way and you've kind of got muscle memory um, you know tied into that build like you know like you know the cooldown times on your grenades you know like when you're gonna get your grenade back so that tells you when you can go do this certain thing when you can go get surrounded by ads when it's safe when it's not safe because you have you have the memorization built in that this these are the cooldown times and this is how I can instantly get my grenade back when I need to or not. Um, so when you change that build up um, by say taking off double bomber then it changes all your cooldown times and you've got to adjust. So for me you know as a kind of as a middle-aged average gamer I don't like I'm not super adaptive to uh, changing stuff all the time. I'd rather just have a little bit of consistency with the various builds that I have. But to each their own. Um, you know, I have nothing against anybody that wants to use all the seasonal artifacts in the world. Um, no. Like I said, I use them myself, modestly, usually. I mean, we don't have a choice with champion mods. Uh, like, it's not... In this dungeon, it doesn't really matter. Uh, unless it's on Master, then you've got overloads to take care of. But, you know, with Nightfalls, Grandmasters, and stuff, obviously, you need to use the seasonal artifacts, or you're not going to be 
you're gonna be dying, you're not you're, gonna, you're just gonna be failing. Like you're basically forced to use some of the seasonal artifacts. And the anti-champion ones are definitely, you know, I'm not recommending that you don't use the seasonal artifact at all. Use it for especially the stuff that you absolutely need to survive the season. Such as anti-champion mods. And I'll, I'll use those even when um, even when there is no champions because anti-champion mods uh, are, are ge just generally buffs all around. Like anti-barrier bows are always going to pierce shields. So these hydras, they're not champions, but look what anti-barrier is doing. Yes, Wishender has armor piercing arrows, but it also has intrinsic anti-barrier uh, rounds or arrows. So I could use a legendary bow without any intrinsic overload capabilities or uh, champion capabilities and I could put anti-barrier bow mod on my arm piece which is you know this season we have anti-barrier bows and then my legendary bows are also going to do the same thing that wish ender just did mind you it's not going to do as much damage because it's a legendary bow it's not an exotic um, so uh, what else what else is anti-barrier good against uh, it's good against phalanxes with shields it's good against the scorn that have shields um, like I said, any Hydras that have shields, including uh, Belmon the boss and the, the Glassway. You know, you got the big Hydra boss and you got the baby Hydra boss and Glassway. Anti-barrier rounds are your friend right there. Um, so those, those, are, those are enemy types. There's a lot of enemy types that just um, you would benefit using anti-barrier rounds against, even if they're not champions. Overload, same thing. So I think for this dungeon, uh, if you see my loadout from part one, you may see at the end here again, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm pretty sure that I'm using... Oh, no, I'm not. I, I was when I did my... I think when I did my solo completion, um, I was using overload rounds on my SMG because my SMG is basically my bread and butter for ag clear and everything else. Uh, proc and repulsor brace, proc and falcons, volatile rounds, everything. SMG is doing it all, so I'm running SMG reloader for more, uh, for quicker, more reliable reloads. Um, but I was also, because I had room on my arm piece, I just put on overload rounds for auto rifles and SMGs. Which, it doesn't matter if there's no overloads or not, because overloading enemies is. Is basic is kind of like a mini suppression effect. Um, it's like if you if you know the um, there's the same as the intrinsic um, origin perk that came with a lot of the witch queen weapons, psycho hack. It's similar to that. So damaging enemies with psycho hack or with overload rounds, any enemies is going to is going to uh, minimize the damage that they do to you. So if you damage them, they're going to do less damage to you. That's how overload rounds work. That's also how psycho hack works, in case you didn't know. Um, which, actually I didn't even really pay attention to this, but my red herring rocket launcher has psycho hack. So that potentially could have helped me survive Percy's here and I didn't even realize um, you know damage resist mods are really important here uh, in, the, in this especially against Percy's I'd say more than more than uh, Aklas. Aklas is a, is a more survivable boss fight uh, but probably more probably longer and a bit more tedious Percy's is uh, is, a, is a much tougher fight to survive even 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 when it's just damage phase and it's just you and Percy's uh, he's he's still still very easy to die to him alone like never mind him just roaming around the map with a hundred ads and supplicants and everything that's also easy to die but it's 
it's easy to die just when it's damage against Percy's because he's blasting you with void and everything. If he gets too close, he's going to stomp you, send you flying into a wall, and kill you, or just outright kill you from the stomp. Um, so, I, I may not even realize, but Psycho Hack on Red Herring was probably, in a sense, overloading Percy's, and I was therefore taking less damage from Percy's than normal. Um... So I, I didn't even uh, I didn't even think about that until now. But that's just sometimes that's how it goes. Like there's you can't think of everything. Um, there's always there's always moments in the game where you're like I don't you know why did I do more damage there? Why didn't I take as much damage there? Why is this different there than it was last time? Well, you can't think of everything. There's like hundreds of different factors. Um, in the game and, you, and even when you do your build and you think you got everything to a T, you know, applying it in game is a whole different ball game. There's variables all over the place. So, it's one thing I love about this game. Well, gaming in general is just like, it's always a learning experience. The more variables there are, the more there is to learn from. Um, and so why do I go with rockets against purses here? Well, I think it just rockets are kind of like the the most reliable um, most reliable heavy to use for, versus Percy's. You can't you can do just as much damage, if not more damage, with with the linear fusion rifle, but. Um, it's a lot harder to hit his crit. Like if you can't do crit damage versus Percy's, if you miss a couple shots, say your accuracy is like 50% with a with a linear, you're not doing as much damage as a rocket. Um, so you can go either way, but you know Percy's is wiggling around, moving all over the place. You're moving around, trying to evade uh, his void blast. It's just not practical for. I would say most players to use a linear. Um, the other other options that you could practically use against Percy's and do decent damage, Grand Overture. Um, actually, Grand Overture, since all the buffs to the missile volleys has been uh, it's been good across the board in in lots of different scenarios and. Um, but it, it does very well against Percy's because you can proc your missile volley buff with Grand Overture by shooting Percy's while he's immune. So as he's roaming around the map here and you're completing circuits, you can be shooting you can be shooting him or her um, with I'm pretty sure sex is undefined here. Uh, but you could be shooting you could be shooting it with uh, with Grand Overture and getting your volley buffed times 20 so that when damage phase comes around you've got uh, you know a free 20 times missile volley buff and it does insane damage I've seen I've seen people solo three phase with Grand Overture um, so you could do that it's just I don't like using Grand Overture um, all that much because it's slow to fire and you're putting yourself at risk every time you're charging up your it's, it's kind of like a linear fusion rifle slash machine gun um, like it takes a while to charge your shot up to shoot it so you're putting yourself at risk while you're doing that and then it takes forever for the uh, for your shot to get to its target like the velocity on them is just super slow so I die a lot using Grand Overture, just trying to charge the uh, missile volley buff. Unfortunate there. Uh, I was hoping that was it, but. So yeah, rockets are, are just very reliable. 
Um, and with field enhanced field prep, I had more heavy ammo bricks than I knew what to do with. Um, I also have enhanced frenzy on it, which is the best damage perk that you can get on it for just general boss damage. I used to have enhanced adrenaline junkie on it, but that was more of kind of like void walker specific or heart of inmost light. You know, grenade build specific ad clear um, type of type of perk because adrenaline junkie, even though it gives you the biggest damage buff on the weapon, um, it's like 30, 33 percent extra damage or something, but it relies on you getting a grenade kill first and then it, it's just like it, it doesn't last long once once you do get adrenaline junkie times five. Um, yeah, there's you can get stacks of adrenaline junkie, but you need five to get the full damage buff and the only way to get five is to uh, it's, it, well, the easiest way is just to get one grenade kill. One grenade kill will give you all, all five stacks. Otherwise you gotta get like get five kills in quick succession. Um, so yeah. Unfortunately there's no like clown cartridge or uh, explosive light or... Um, this is just kind of the best red herring roll that I have so it's probably not the best heavy to use for this uh, boss fight but because I'm using a void subclass because I'm, I've got font of might, high energy fire, volatile rounds, all of that is uh, adding to the damage of red herring which it wouldn't add to grand overture right it wouldn't even though hothead is a better rocket launcher because uh, well, it's not the archetype like red herring uh, is is at the top for archetypes for damage uh, Adaptive and aggressive frames are the best rocket launchers Red herring is one of those hothead is also one of those but hothead has better perks You can get clown cartridge, which just means you get to shoot more rockets in a shorter uh, shorter time frame so I think on average I was getting five rockets off on Percy's. If I was using Hothead with Clown Cartridge, I probably could have got off seven maybe. Um, or if I was using Warlock with a Demolitionist on Hothead, I could have I could have got off more rockets. Um, not only that, but I could have had like explosive light, so instead of just doing 15% extra damage from frenzy, I'd be doing 25% extra damage from explosive light, right? So, clown, so hothead just has better perk rolls. Uh, but being on a void subclass, I wouldn't be able to get font of might with hothead, so I lose 25% there. Uh, I wouldn't be able to get volatile rounds from hothead. It's only on void weapons, which are Falcon's Harbor. So that's how much extra damage does Volatile do? Like the Volatile explosions? I don't know, but it's actually a lot. It's um, maybe, uh, you know, it's somewhere in like the 20 to 50% range. There's no like, there's no value that I know that's tied to it exactly, but it's, uh, it's I think it's based on the amount of damage done with the, with the Volatile weapon, right? So like explosions from Unforgiven, Volatile explosions on adds aren't as dramatic as they would be with a rocket launcher. Um, so yeah, I think the volatile explosion damage scales to the weapon with the volatile application. Don't, don't quote me on it, I'm not 100% sure, but yeah. So Red Herring's not the best rocket launcher with the best perks to use against Percy's. I'm not saying that, but it's uh, it worked very well for me in this run with um, all of those factors. And I managed to do it. So just like Duality, this took me... Um, I didn't go into this right away thinking, oh, I'm going to solo flawless it. No, if you're an average player... Focus first on getting the solo. There's a triumph for, for doing it on solo. Gives you a greater chance at getting the exotic. Um, so you may as well forget about Flawless um, and just do just try and beat it solo. 
if you can beat Aklas solo, if you can beat Percy's solo, doesn't matter how many times you die because you have to restart those encounters at the beginning. If you can beat those encounters, then you can solo flawless the whole dungeon. Uh, so, just like duality, I put it aside a day towards the end of the season uh, when I had some time to focus on the dungeon alone. Try and get the solo done. Once I've done that, that is the bulk of the work. That's 80% of the work is doing it solo. Um, after that, the solo flawless is, you know, some of it's luck and RNG, but it's much easier than just doing it solo. Because while you're doing it solo, you're actually learning the raid solo. It's much different than learning it in a team. Um, everything's different. So, like duality, it took me like four hours to do it solo, which is a lot. But, you know, in the end, I was able to do the solo flawless right after one or two tries. So, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.